I don't know, Safari Yoshi. I don't think this is one of your finer creations. I mean, a Yoshi you made entirely out of cookies. You know Yoshis and cookies. Better than anyone, because you created them both. If the other Yoshi kin aren't going to eat him alive, he's going to eat his own arm off. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Yoshi's Woolly World. Last time, we started World 3 and arrived in a land made of giant Yoshi cookies. It was a wonderful, whimsical place. And it sets the stage very nicely for just, sets the stage? Sets the stage very nicely for what World 3 has in store. Just a bright, happy, sunshiny place, yet deceptively challenging. This time, we're continuing on in Wobble Mobile Jaunt. I always wanna say Wobble Mobile Jaunt, because it sounds like a, uh, I don't know if there's alliteration for end of words. Oh, it's called rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that was something. Um, I'm thinking, uh, attempting on power up ground pound a little bit, because I do remember this, and I do remember what we're going to be doing, well, like I know that this is a vertical stage, but there's not really bottomless pits because it's just one giant interconnected place. I think I'll, I'll go for the watermelon, it's the same cost. Give me some of that melon! Now I'm a melon cookie! Chosen for this stage because... Um... A melon cookie is... I don't know if it's... Uh, very similar to the new enemy that we just ran into! That is... A Rough and Tumble! And they're going to be appearing a lot! <laughs> it's a pretty adorable name. They are also pretty adorable. They roll along the ground and you can bounce off of their heads. They were kind of what I was thinking of, uh, yeah, don't touch their sides. Can we destroy them with watermelon seeds? No, they, they just bounce right off. Okay, uh, I chose a terrible power-up for this stage, now didn't I? Hence the name that we saw before, it's all about the mobiles. Things hanging from a possibly existent ceiling. They shift based on our weight, and we got a platform on them. And, uh, not only that, oh, oh. Okay, I see. Wow, okay, I want to go down here. That's cool! Wow! So, you got these blankets that are tied together, interconnecting these mobiles so they're not just hanging off of nothing. That's good touches. I like it when platformers do that, where it's not just floating platforms in the sky for no apparent reason, and everything actually has a reason to be the way it is that makes sense in a three-dimensional space. Might be a 2D platformer, but that doesn't mean that you're limited to it when trying to make your world interesting and believable and... You know, immersive. I I look for deep immersion in my uh, Yoshi games. Yeah, I'm a I'm a connoisseur of sorts. Moving right on along, if the concept for the stage looks familiar, but you can't quite place the reason why, there's a good reason for that. This level, in conjunction with the uh, windmill stage back in World One, was the inspiration for the Wooly World stage in Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. This is a very notable talking point that I wanted to bring up because this is the only time, unless there's something I don't know about an ultimate, a stage in Super Smash Brothers predated the game it was from. There have been times where characters predated, such as Roy not even having his game released in Japan yet when he was in Melee, but this is the only time it ever happened for a stage. Sakurai has stated in interviews that it was added at the very end of development and it's not very hard to see why. It's possible that you played that stage and you remember what it looks like, but you weren't really actively remembering anything about it because it wasn't from a game that was out at the time. And just kind of had it deep in the recesses of your memory all this time, because for whatever reason, when I say it predated the release, I mean it predated by a lot. In Japan and uh, Europe, wasn't gonna just say in Japan, it was about six or seven months before the release. In America, it was 11 months. <sighs> Alright, so I understand game localization is hard work, and there's no 100% perfect complaint-free way of doing it. But this is Yoshi's Wooly World! <laughs> there's no way that this had any good localization reason to come out so much later over here. I mean, I appreciate the work the man does, though, so I'm not trying to discredit his work here, but... <laughs> it was out to silence me before I spoke sin against the man himself, but... I was going to say that, assuming Nintendo of Europe did the localization that they got, one member of Treehouse could have localized this game on their laptop during one trip to the toilet. 
Seriously, change Wii U to Wii U Deluxe and change the one mention of trousers to pants. There you go, localization finished. Yet, it took so much longer than you would think. My only personal theory for why this was is there were really bad amiibo shortages in North America where it was clear they didn't anticipate how successful they were going to be. Maybe that had something to do with it, trying to make sure there wouldn't be an amiibo shortage that time around. I just found it so random that it took that long to come out over here. And my first experience was actually having to buy a European Wii U uh, to test something for a video that I couldn't find proof of online. And uh, Yoshi's Willy World was just coming out around that time, so I bought a European copy and played it months early. Which is a pretty memorable experience. I remember just playing the heck out of it for the first night that I had it because it was such a special thing. And it was in English, so there was nothing I couldn't understand. I really wanted to talk about it because it's one of the most baffling differences in release dates that I've ever seen, and I, I don't mean to come off whiny or spoiled or entitled, because I mean, Nintendo of America's pretty good to us most of the time. You know, except for taking three years longer than Europe and Australia to release New Play Control Pikmin 2, even though it was already in English, and making it the uh, last game Nintendo ever published for the Wii, and uh, taking eight months longer than Europe to release Xenoblade Chronicles, even though it was already in English and then only releasing it exclusively at GameStop and only printing the game once, causing it to sell for over $100 secondhand for years. Then after all those years, taking eight months longer than Europe to release Xenoblade Chronicles in the eShop, even though it was already in English, natively compatible with the hardware and the publishing rights are solely owned by Nintendo, so it would only require one employee uploading a file, taking three months longer than the rest of the world to release Professor Layton and the Osron Legacy in North America, even though it was already in English, never releasing the sequel to Hotel Desk in North America, even though it was already in English, never releasing the sequel to Trace Memory in North America, even though it was already in English, never releasing Tingle's Rosy Ripple Land in North America, even though it was already in English, never releasing Disaster Day of Crisis in North America, even though it was already in English and shown off at an E3, never releasing Pokemon Typing Adventure in North America, even though it was already in English and top the sales in the other regions, taking a week longer than everyone else to release the Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire demo, even though it was already in English, released everywhere else in a finished state and exclusive to the eShop, meaning it would have only taken one employee uploading a 250 megabyte file to do, making North America the only region in the world to not get a physical release of Fatal Frame Maiden in the Black Water, making North America the only region in the world to not get Bayonetta Switch Collector's Edition, only making a few hundred Hyrule Warriors special editions for North America, and only selling them in one store in New York City, even though they were available normally everywhere else, giving us the worst special edition of Samus Returns, making our release of the Xenoblade Chronicles X soundtrack only contain 10 out of the 55 songs in the game on a flash drive containing DRM that prevents copying the music to anything else and only allows it to play on Windows when everyone else got all 55 tracks on a normal CD, making it so that North America is the only region in the world to have retail exclusive Amiibo, and even making some of them exclusive to Amazon where you can't see them in person before you buy and ship them in bubble mailer so you get your boxes smashed in, making North America the only region where you can't buy Amiibo directly to Nintendo to remedy retailer shortages, making it so you need to buy a bundle to obtain the Amiibo of Duck Hunt, Mr. Game & Watch, Me Fighters, Reese, Cyrus, KK, Callie, Marie, Toon Link, Toon Zelda, Alm, Celica, Samus, and Metroid, even though you can buy them standalone everywhere else, only allowed the XL version of the new 3DS in North America and waiting seven months after the rest of the world to give us the customizable version and only releasing it through a limited edition bundle, releasing the Hello Kitty Amiibo cards everywhere but North America even though we have at least one game where they unlock exclusive content causing them to sell second hand for 80 plus dollars, and all of our club Nintendo rewards being printed on paper or digital downloads compared to the cool stuff everyone else got, but you know, aside from all those cherry picked instances, they're pretty good to us. Okay, every territory has its problems. I felt bad for Europe, Australia, and even rarely Japan as well for certain things, so... Yeah, it's not just us. That was a new enemy. The Perlerbead version of the Rough and Tumbles. They're pretty sweet. Uh, they're just as bouncy as their higher resolution counterparts. See, you just... You always want to rag on people for not being as high resolution as their cousins over on the other game system, but let me tell you, that's racist. They do just as good of a job as they would have otherwise. Don't even think about them like that. Don't think of me as a resolution. Think of me who I am. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting really weird here. Uh, all right. Uh, so... Think over this way. We have just a giant interconnected web of these mobiles. <laughs> See the board that they're hanging off of right there. Again, love it when they do that where every platform is there for a reason. Something you don't really get in a lot of older games, but I think you do get in newer ones. It's a great example of how 2D games aren't dead and how there's still new cool things being done in them, because when do you ever see things like this? Wow, uh, did I just... Well, uh, it's very clear what was on my priority list to be doing. I was doing a heck of a lot of whining, not a whole lot of collecting. Oh, wait, here we go. <laughs> Uh, there was stuff down here. Yes. So you use that, knowing that there's stuff below you. Jump down, get the Wonder Wool. Now I'm only missing three collectibles. Not bad. Watermelon was also a terrible, terrible choice for this. 
I thought maybe the rough and tumbles could be beaten by it in tight spots because I remember those choke points being really hard to deal with when they're timing you on collecting all the beads. Yet, yeah. oh no, 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 no. You are not, no, 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 no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. There's the red wonder wall. It actually was not very well hidden. I just thought I had to come back later in the stage to get up this high. If you have the resolve to permit one other Yoshi on the screen, this is another stage that's very exploitable by two player. Really any vertical stage is because you can swallow each other and spit each other up higher onto other ledges and then have the one that's lower just go into an egg and bubble up to them. It's really easy. Come on, this isn't even supposed to be hard. Earth, I see you smiling at me as I keep failing all the time. Suddenly my entire life makes sense. Earth, you are always there whenever I fail at anything. You are always... The thing that Piranha Plant is growing out of? When this kid grows up, he wants to be an astronaut. Just a hunch. I don't think I got those red beads the first time around, so I'm pointing them out to you just in case I didn't, because they don't look familiar. And I'm up to 19 patches when I think I only got 18 before. Bing! There it is, right at the very end, on the very last mobile. The last flower. Glad I only missed one collectible and it was toward the beginning of the stage. I'm not tempted enough to go back. Nice candy cane carpet you've laid out for us. This is going to be one interesting looking Yoshi. I'm looking at all those Wonder Wolves and how they don't really fit together and are all very loud. Combination of colors is reminding me about how recently I learned that your eyes actually can't normally see yellow, it just emulates being able to see it. It can only see red, blue, and green, which I thought was very interesting. And the proof of that is that you can't picture a color that's yellowish blue in your mind because green is actually a separate color than that. Are you kidding me? Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> I was thinking two seconds into the stage was when I missed it. Serious? Let me guess, Cubby Hole? No. Huh. Okay, maybe on the... It's not that, is it? Because I have the bead. No, that's... Flower? I think I understand, and I remember this giving me trouble before. Is it... Is it? Yes! That's a very out of the way illusion wall! I'm just gonna come out and say this because it's been on my mind. The fluff and tumbles. The fluff and tumbles look like a variety of Angry Bird. <laughs> they really do! They look like they're built for destruction and that they'd fit well into the level design in that series where you'd have a bird that just kind of rolls along the ground like a wrecking ball or something. In case you're wondering what the alternate pathway beyond these pixel guys was, you got this going on, and you hop on up, and then you hate yourself. Everything's free if you're good at Rochambeau, and even if you're not. What does this look like? Whoa! Playtime Yoshi. He's more durable, so you can give him to your three-year-old and he'll actually survive for more than a day. Scarf Roll Scamper. I feel like we can uh, we can afford to do one more stage. That one was a little bit on the long side, but um, I do try to do two whenever possible. Hmm. Power of Ground Pound was tempting on the last one. Let's go for it this time. Uh, now. Come on. No. I'm going to have trouble ground pounding when those things are above me because Yoshi automatically clings onto the background. Yes, we have wall climbing now on the Super Mario World. Would be nice if Yoshi knew how to do that with somebody on his back, but I digress. Go away, please. Thank you. And we have sort of new enemies. 
Those are, you're never gonna believe this, man. I, I've been telling you that Yoshi enemies have really hilarious names, and uh, we're about to, we're about to see that tenfold. <laughs> Get it? Because everything's made out of fabric. This guy. This guy right here. His name? Is Wall Lakitu. That amount of creativity is so funny. <laughs> Give me that. Wow, somebody made a house out of a sweater. Is there anything down here? No, okay. Always check, always make sure. And we got some needles leading us up to this place. And chances are. Chances are that spiny egg is going to hurt. Plop. Oh, he's all tied up in pink. That's way kinkier than whatever color we had before. I would have noted it if it was pink. <laughs> had to. Checkpoint, and now things get a little fancy. Yes, they do, because we're platforming across these. While also avoiding incoming fire. Uh, nothing, up, nothing in the wall. Okay. That's where I thought that was going, but no, it's going all the way up here. It's much, much higher. Turn one egg into three. And now let's get even fancier. It's okay, my feet won't get tangled up in their necklace clasps. Oh, that guy's hanging by his ass. <laughs> it's not even his belt. It is straight up the butt of his pants. All right, just for that, you're coming with me. <laughs> you're the kind of guy that I want his corpse on my side. So you're coming with me. That's a really funny touch. I don't think, like, I don't have anything written about that guy in my notes. I do have notes by my side that um, are things that I might want to talk about in a stage, just in case it's, like, a slower burn than I think it's going to be or whatever, but I don't have anything saying, like, hey, be on the lookout for a fly guy who's really funny or something. I feel like if I knew about that before, I would have noted it. Couple of those. Getting a Wonder Wool. We've missed one. I'll be right back. Let's listen to this music. I actually don't remember this song being particularly great, but it's sounding really good as I'm talking over it, and I kind of want to stop for a bit. I fumbled all around, all over the place, and then I died after not finding the collectible. And I might die again soon based on recent information that I've received. I think instead I'll show you where the collectible is and then we'll listen to it afterward. But trust me, it's very good. I think I had good intuition. But speaking as a man who's in the know of this music now, it is very good. You have something to look forward to. Oh. No. I was so distracted by the ass man that I didn't even realize it. There it is. That sounds really questionable now that I'm thinking about it more. <laughs> oh, my heart is pounding at this moment. As you can see on screen, we are low on health and I don't know if we're gonna make it. Though uh, I'm really happy I got to see a real rainbow hanging in the sky before I died. All right, there's that flower. We got three and three. On to section number two. Thank ya! I greatly appreciate ya. I'm just out to do all of my accents today. Yes, I am. I like doing my accents. For some reason, Yoshi brings it out in me. Yar. That's not a pirate. <laughs> I'm sure pirates lived in whatever country that's supposed to be. I don't even know. Oh, uh, whoa. Uh, pardon me, but wow, my cheeks are fat. <laughs> Maybe it's the balls drawn to make or the balls drawn, the stars drawn on my cheeks to make them look like, you know, a playtime ball or something though, but yeah, my cheeks are fat when I'm climbing on these walls. <laughs> Never really thought of it, but I guess if Yoshi is hiding entire people inside of his mouth, his cheeks would have to balloon out pretty far. Let's eat that. The average color of that was apparently white, and uh, another one of these flowers. 
Whoa, uh, that's right, I have a power badge on. It's been kind of so long because I've had the capability of using it that I forgot. It's good to keep in mind nuking all the enemies on the screen. Like so! Ha! Thought you had me? Well, joke's on you. I have the power of buying my abilities. It's a great way for the rich to get richer. Alright, unraveling the scrolls that foretell, I will be going up into a warp pipe. And ooh, uh, this is intriguing. Turns out, you can eat spiny eggs. They don't look like it. I never, I kind of thought they were made of pipe cleaners or something. And they're a little shiny, so I was thinking maybe they were made of rougher material, kind of like the tap taps are. No, you can eat them. There's one more. Two more to go. Just two more to go. There it is. Flower. And stamp. Don't think it's possible to get up there, actually. Be interesting to see what could happen if he could climb on that. The answer is... Moving shadows? Given you hackers things to do with games that you thought you could long move on from. There's always new stuff. There's another one. There's another one. Yes! And it's always the last one in the line! <laughs> He's just lagging behind everyone else, being like, Guys, I put my pants on wrong this morning. Hang on, wait up. I gotta change my pants. Yoshi's coming this way. Oh my god, you guys are all done. I couldn't protect you. What am I gonna do with the rest of my life? Uh, and now he's killing the neighbors. And... Oh lord, he coming. He coming. You coming with me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, come on. And you guys are logically gonna have a- no, you don't have a stamp. I thought they were going to because if you hit the Baron Von Zeppelins, they fall to the ground and you can't get them. There's Wonder Wool number five. I don't know about you, but I feel like we're coming down to the end of this. And I remember- oh, no, 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 no! Not today. I'm getting whatever that is. I don't care what you think you have power of over me, Mr. Scrolly Yarn, but you don't. Oh, that's what this is. Yes. Get to ride this and then go through the end of the goal. Pretty sure that disappears if you don't jump off of it right away, so be quick. One heart. There's yet to be a single World 3 bonus stage, and that trend's not gonna get bucked anytime soon because... Scarf Roll Yoshi is preventing it from happening. He doesn't like bonus stages. Nah, I'm only teasing. It's because we got a fortress up next because we're halfway done with World 3. Already, sheesh. This thing is just coming and going. Anyway, yeah. I'm not going to say it again because redundancy isn't inherently clever after the fifth time you do it. See you guys then. Yahoo!